The foundation is as vast as it is clandestine, yet studies have shown that personnel require social interactions and personal connections to maintain their emotional and mental health. This missed connections page is for those with the express interest in meeting someone they met in passing, had lost touch with, or were otherwise unable to exchange contact information with. All personnel are required to be up to date on the Employee Conduct Handbook and Interpersonal Relations Guidelines. Postings are for meeting with an interest in a platonic or romantic nature. Postings of a joking quality will be moved to the Humorous Missed Connections page. This includes postings about or by SCPs, SCPJs, GOI personnel, or other non-Foundation personnel. Do not contact other users with unsolicited offers. Do not post phone numbers, email addresses, or URLs in postings. Sensitive information will be redacted. Do keep postings site appropriate. Do report any postings that violate Foundation policies. You saved my life and I don't even know your name. During the last containment breach, I was the researcher who got trapped under the falling debris. You were the black-haired security guard who unloaded your gun at SCP-1305. I mean, you may know it as the cat lure and drew it away from me. Without you, I know I would have been turned into one of those things. I would enjoy the chance to at least buy you a drink or, or maybe dinner sometime at the site cafeteria. So... Please reply with what SCP-1305 said just before you shot at it. I hope you remember me, Sight. Redacted. I'm a researcher at Sight. Redacted. You were the one working with me on Project Redacted. I'm the one who was able to Redacted. When the Redacted. Went Redacted. I hope this message will help you remember me because I really think we had a thing. The number to contact me is Redacted. 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 Meet me for infinite pizza. Site 17. To the person who used SCP 458 on Tuesday, the 13th, prior to 1 30 p.m., uh, I, I thought I was the only one who enjoyed pineapple and anchovy pizza on a wheat crust with white sauce, but <laughs> after discovering the remains of your lunch set in the waste disposal unit, I have discovered that I am not alone in my strange preferences for pizza. I would love to meet up for lunch. Please meet me in the Site 17 cafeteria tomorrow at 1.30 p.m. We can share our unique tastes and, you know, maybe something more. <laughs> I'll be wearing the yellow tie and the black-rimmed glasses. To the one with the gun named Martha. Dinner on me? Site 19. To the red-haired female agent I saw in the mess hall on Saturday at like 12.30ish, thank you for buying me lunch. <sighs> I lost my wallet, and uh, you were kind enough to buy me something to eat. You know, I, I, was, I was starving. You know, sadly, um, you, you left before I could even get your name. You told me a little about how you used your gun. I, I think you referred to it as uh, Martha. Well, look, I'd like to know more about you. <laughs> I'm stuck in the labs mostly, so, you know, maybe you can tell me some stories about the outside over, uh, over dinner? It's on me. <laughs> Please meet me outside Site 19's mess hall at 5 p.m. on the 21st. That's Sunday. Don't miss it. I need to thank you. Me. Head researcher. You know the project. You? Short, but sharp in your gray suit, smiling, your L4 badge skillfully obstructed. We both know how the council voted on this program, but then you swept in and out of my office anyway, leaving a stack of folders and no perceptible trail. I need to find you. I need to thank you. And I don't need to know which one you work for, but you have to tell them. We need more. It was all in your eyes. Sight for one. I never learned your name. You came into Site 41 with the new transfers after they decommissioned some of the western alpine containment areas. You know, the first time I ever saw you, you looked to be in your 50s, 
maybe a few years younger than me, with your graying amber hair and a loose bun. When our eyes met, I saw relief cross your face and maybe something deeper. Then your eyes went wide and you looked away. You must have transferred away after that, but the personnel records must have been scrubbed or classified beyond my access level, (laughs) which in and of itself is pretty impressive. I've been at this job for so many years, and I've never felt anything but alone. I've never questioned that bitter truth or my life of cold service, but now the doubt is there, and I can't ignore it. I should know better than to ask now, but I have to know. What am I missing? You're really funny. Sight five, five, one. (laughs) Hey, so I'm really going through a bit of a rough patch at the moment. I just have very overwhelming apathy for everything that happens. You were a researcher at Sight 551, um, the one where I'm stationed at. A really big containment breach happened. I mean, I don't know the specifics, but we were in the safe room waiting for the MTF to get everything under control, and everybody was scared as hell. Well, you decided to pass the time with some jokes and, like, some personal life stories. I'll be really honest, but that's probably the hardest I've ever laughed for as long as I can remember. For the first time in a while, you made me feel better when I needed it most. Look, I just, I think we should hang out sometime. Maybe grab a sandwich from Sonic. I haven't seen you since the breach happened, so I don't know if you got transferred over or something, but when you get the chance, we should hang out. You ran from me. Sight. Eight. Nine. You were the MTF agent at Sight. Eight. Nine who saw me, a researcher, and ran like you'd seen a ghost. I I don't blame you. I was angry with you for a while about what you did, but in the end, I mean, I did the same thing too. What right do I have to be angry then? I understand. When someone calls on you, you have to answer. Maybe it's just a miracle that we answered the same call. Look, I know you, or at least the person you were before. I don't think running will help either of us, and maybe we can fix what broke. I'm upset too, but I miss you more, and I don't think you did the wrong thing five years ago. Even if you're mad at yourself, or at me, I just want to talk. Even if it doesn't work out, I think we should try. Missed connection during cleaning of 173 container. I am redacted. We had to watch uh, 173 last Thursday while someone else cleaned its container. I didn't want to take my eyes off of it to, like, ask ask for your number. (laughs) I can't access the cleaning log, so I I thought I'd try here. You were there when I needed it. Site 231. Hey. We worked on SCP-231 together. I'm not sure if you remember. If you took pills to forget about it and I've just reminded you, then I'm sorry. But you don't seem like the kind of person who would want to forget this experience. The procedure was... Actually, I don't even need to explain it. If you remember it, then you'd know the words that can't comprehend what we had to do. I had nightmares for weeks. I don't know whether you had them or not, but your pep talks seriously helped. In my opinion, I felt a bond growing, and it was growing fast. You voluntarily moved off site, and I never got your personal contact info. Look, I'm going through some rough times right now, and if you got me through the procedure, you can get me through this. Maybe we can talk over a drink. I know you're a busy man, so... I hope you are able to read this. See you soon. Hopefully. To the archivist that saved my ass. In uh, 2016, 
I put in a request to access documents on a time-sensitive anomaly that only manifests like once every uh, four years, only to find that R-A-I-S-A had a six-month backlog on archival requests. You know, on top of that, my request was vague as hell, you know, like less than a paragraph, but you, you came through for me in a day. I don't, I don't know if you're a man, a woman, some like automated search engine that processed my request to higher priority because of like, you know, some keyword I inserted without knowing, but I'd love to meet you to say thanks in person. We worked on the thing in Boston together. You know which Boston. It's not the one in Mass, but in the Midwest. <laughs> we were so busy containing the growth that we didn't get to exchange names. I was a scared rookie and I wanted out. I was willing to down a bottle of amnesthetics just to go back to living my life, but you showed me that we could still be human despite all of the horrible shit that we see and do. Maybe we can get a drink around Christmas. To the fellow Modest Mouse fan, Sight64. I've been listening to my music out loud in the Sight64 cafeteria at night for years now. Running those experiments into the early hours of the morning, you often have the place to yourself when grabbing a coffee refill. You entered behind me at some point and started singing along. We talked about music for another 15 minutes before I needed to get back to the lab. I never caught your name, and I haven't seen you around the site since. I hope to see you around again sometime. Until then, I guess we simply missed the boat. To the D-class with the gray eyes and loud laugh. Sight, one, one. I still remember the day you were supposed to be terminated. I was transferred off before, of course. I don't think they'd let you remember. But I'd been a wreck. It's all right. I remember enough for both of us. I remember you asked if I was okay. I remember how your eyes looked like my sister's. And I had to remind myself that preserving human life, preserving your life, it didn't matter if it only lasted a month. I remember that you were the only person who laughed at my jokes on the team. How it was loud and a little hysterical. I remember the pitying look my supervisor gave me as I watched you go every night with a mix of relief and cold horror. I remember counting down on my head to the 31st. I think it fucked me up more than the project did. I think you might have been the only person there who looked at me like I was still human. Seeing you at Site 11 made me feel more so than I had since. They wouldn't let you remember, but I swear I saw something in your eyes change. It doesn't make sense to kill hundreds every month. I don't think they ever wanted me to remember you as a person. Look, I'm sorry. I want another chance. I want to talk. I don't know if I can get you a coffee, but I sure as hell intend to find out. You are my best nightmare. I met you when I was sinking in the void. You told me a tale of a world's end, of a universe sundered by immense calamity, but I was glad just to meet you. You came to me at my darkest hour, a streak of moonlight in the endless darkness. You saved many lives with your messages, and my life might not even matter for you, but know that you saved mine too. I've told them your message, and I wonder if I'll ever be able to tell you mine. To the person who's followed me for the past three sites. Site 4-1. Where are you nowadays? Are you holding up? I feel a little silly reaching out like this, but you're the one person who's been a constant in my foundation career so far. In Area 12, you were the one giving the seminar to all the new researchers. You, know, you somehow managed to make it digestible, even though everything I knew about science and the world was being shattered in front of my eyes. <laughs> Later, I got transferred to Site-36 because of God knows why, and you apparently came along too. And since I saw you beautifully <laughs> play your cello for the Site's annual talent show, I asked around a little bit, but apparently that was your last day? And then I got kicked around to Site-41, 
I saw you in the hallways and in the mess hall, but I never really worked up the nerve to talk to you until my last day there. Um, which just so happened to be the day we had an unannounced containment breach drill. Huh. Rambling aside, look, I, I would have liked to have known you better, and and I hope you're doing well, wherever you are. I swear I knew you. Sight three one. So, I think I knew you. I saw you. Tall, brown, straight hair, not sure of gender, high-ranking at Site 31. While well, rocking around to the cafeteria, and I just got the worst case of deja vu. Thought it might be just one of those things that happens, but I got to thinking about how memory's a bit fuzzy around here. What with that, you know, window meme going around and all. I thought about it longer, and yeah, I really think I must have known you at some point. So I'm level three site-wide, so I've got that little orange badge that you get, and I have four out of 3018 clearance. I'm out inside SCP-3018's enclosure from nine to five. That almost makes it sound like a normal job. <laughs> Every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, sometimes I'm out there Saturdays for recreation. I used to wear glasses. I got contacts now. I'm a little overweight. I've got a mustache and the beginnings of a beard that never grows quite like I want it to. If you were erased from my memory for some classified reason, then I guess ignore this, but if not, I'd really hate to forget an important person in my life. Oh, and uh, if you wear glasses, uh, please don't when you come out to see me. I'm supposed to be clean of window meme now, but uh, you never know these things. <laughs> I can't remember what you look like. Sight 1-9. It was the breach at Sight 1-9 last month. I don't remember much of what happened. Maybe the hired ups dosed me or something with amnestics for some reason. No, it doesn't matter. I remember you. I don't remember your name or what you looked like. I don't remember what we spoke about or even if we spoke at all. I just remember that you were so, so deeply fascinating. I also recall that you weren't a sphere. And then there were two. Hey, it's been quite a while, huh? The last time we saw each other was with that 096 shit. That was one hell of a memory. Out of that entire squadron, it's just me and you left, dude. You were one hell of a soldier, and even though I haven't seen you in quite some time, I bet you still are. I was wondering as to whether you wanted to transfer to damn feds with me. You are an outstanding team, and putting our skills together once again can only be beneficial, right? Oh, <laughs> also, there's the uh, 20 bucks you owe me. Yeah, that can contribute too. Hope to hear back from you soon, man. Pilot who saved my ass, Site 201. Hi, I'm a researcher at Site 201, um, but previously Site 28. You might have been transferred. Uh, might, might have not. Anyway, back when a shipment of that shit from those Russians made it to Brighton Beach, we declared it a level 5 breach. Um, of course, we called in Epsilon 10, you know, aka those headshot, hotshots got all the hardware, you know, we borrowed from the US. Um, so you 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 come in, in, in one of our helicopters, um, shooting at some tentacle flesh horror, <laughs> and then manage to stick a landing on an elevated train track. Oh, honestly, chalk it up to me being stupid and gay, but I was instantly in love. <laughs> I was inspired to write this because Site 201 is, you know, the all important support site. And if you're not transferred, you'll be staying here. Um, get back to me and, you know, uh, maybe we can uh, have a coffee or something. I know you can see this. Hey, sweetheart. It's been nice playing around in your head. Mimetics, ain't they some shit? Just thought I'd say we got off on the wrong foot, you and me. How's about the two of us sit down and have a real... Well, I can't call it a heart-to-heart. -heart. But give me a chance, doll. I may be taking up space in your head, but I can pay rent, if you know what I mean. Pop in front of a mirror sometime. We'll have a nice... You dropped your wallet, Site 6-2.
Hey, uh, so you were a researcher who was needed somewhere, uh, you know, like ASAP due to an emergency, and you were rushing down the hallways to not waste time. Well, on your way, your wallet fell out of your pocket with about 150 bucks, your credit card. Oh, don't worry, I didn't look at any important stuff. Some gift cards for Sonic and a, a bunch of pictures of a very cute little golden retriever. You know, absolutely awesome dog, by the way. You know, hit me up when you have the chance. I'd be happy to give it back to you. I'm at site 62, and, uh, well, I'm probably not going anywhere anytime soon. You helped me get my experiments off the ground, site 565. Hey, so I was trying to get an experiment with SCP Redacted. off the ground. Uh, since that'll probably be blacked out, the, the big one at site 565? Yeah, that one. Well, basically, the higher-ups kept on saying that it wasn't worth wasting D-Class on, and that we didn't have any more to spare after that containment breach back in May. Then you stepped in, reran the numbers, and got me enough to get my experiments done, and, and then some. Without going into too much detail, those results helped cut the cost of containment down by 83%, and got me promoted. I don't know if you fudged the numbers, or if there was an actual mistake, but either way... I want to thank you. Maybe we can meet back up and grab lunch from that subway just outside the site? It feels like the least I could do. I have lunch from 12.30 to 1.45 p.m. If our schedules overlap, you can find me at the table diagonally opposite the salad bar. <laughs> Probably wearing a Star Wars shirt. If they don't overlap, message me with your schedule and I'll see if I can work something out with my superiors. I finally found you. You... A young cadet in your 20s, leaving the Mobile Task Force Beta 10, quote time hoppers, on a mission last Wednesday at 1700 hours. Me? The 63-year-old female scientist that passed you in the corridor. When I saw you, I dropped everything in my hands and just stared. I could not believe my eyes. I knew then and there that you were the one I have searched for my entire life. I hurried away. Happy and confused, with a clump in my throat and butterflies in my stomach. I, I know it is inappropriate and probably will cause trouble, but I just have to see you again. Please meet me in the cafeteria on level two, any day between twelve and thirteen hundred hours. I think you might be my father. I want to know you, but I can't. I hope you see this. Although... You probably won't. I saw you in passing as I was walking through that hallway at Area 2, Sector-19. You're a researcher or an engineer working on some kind of technology. A beautiful, intelligent woman. Your hair in a ponytail. You wear a light blue lab coat. I don't know why I'm reaching out to you. We can never know each other's names, jobs, or work. We're not supposed to know where we work, so any conversation we have will have to be a lie. But I don't care. Let's meet and lie to each other. To post a missed connection, please read the locked collab tale on the SCP wiki and check Discuss for more info on submitting an entry. Thank you to all who have submitted entries and enjoyed the tale. <laughs>